Hey everybody, welcome to my Mr. Cool installation part two. Part two? In part one, I covered the installation of the uh, my basement air handler. Pretty in depth, I think. If you didn't get to see that first part yet and you want to, I'll put it up here right now. In this part, I'm gonna cover the installation of, well, actually not really the outdoor unit. I kind of missed that part. That part's pretty simple. But I'll cover the installation of my two other air handlers, as well as their line set covers, as well as this little guy right here. He's pretty cool, I'll talk about that. So I don't remember if I mentioned this in the last one. So this is a four zone, 36,000 BTU unit, but I only actually have three air handlers connected to it. I have an 18 in my basement. I have a 12,000 going into my dining room kitchen area, as well as a 9,000 BTU unit up in one of my kids' bedrooms. Ultimately, I'm gonna have a second set of this, another 36,000 BTU unit on the other side of my house, feeding three more zones over there but that is not a part of this my biggest reason for that is that these are actually heating and cooling my home not a shop not a garage anything like that and while I don't necessarily need that much BTU power for cooling and dehumidifying I may need that much for heating in the winter time because well it gets pretty cold around here and when temperatures do drop while this is a 36,000 BTU unit when the temperatures get low enough it's not actually able to produce that much heat. So the BTU output diminishes the colder it gets. While these say they can still heat down to negative 13 degrees, when you're at negative 13 degrees, you're definitely not gonna be getting probably anywhere close to 36,000 BTUs of heat. So with two of these, I'm hoping I will have plenty of heating capacity for my home come winter time. Don't worry, I will definitely be updating when that time comes. But in terms of cooling capacity, just these three alone have been doing fantastically because my living room, dining, kitchen is all kind of one big open space. And just having this one 12,000 BTU unit in my dining room has helped the entire first floor of the house. Now I still have three units on my old system still up and running, but this stuff is making a world of difference. My house has been more dehumidified than it ever has yet since we've been in this house. And it's obviously also keeping it cooler than it ever has been in the summertime, especially when it's getting up to 90 some degrees. So, so far, Mr. Cool, very cool. And if you're actually watching when this video is released, it's the 4th of July, also very cool. So, uh, I don't think I have any more to talk about. Then without further ado, like, subscribe, hit the bell. Let's get into this. several times and ultimately break it just to get through here. Now this is only a three inch hole and uh, not using their three and a half inch uh, sleeve. I was planning on using that for the actual point that I go outside, but I might not be doing that there either. I might just still be using a three inch hole saw for that as well. And I can show you that, like the, or tell you the reasons why. I may want to put like a piece of foam tape or something here just to help protect this the drain tube a little bit. Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna be doing is taking this out. I've already carefully bent this sideways and I'll be taking it out the side here, making sure we have a little bit of a slope going down to maintain drainage for our condensate. I'll be cutting a hole right in here and eventually I'm gonna have to put some kind of, I think I'm gonna do like a faux beam, something here across the top of this wall to cover that up. Otherwise, uh, it'd be pretty ugly, so. I believe this is my, uh, what I have to do next, and this will be interesting because I have uh, sip walls and you'll see that, so it's solid foam all the way through the wall. Alright, that hole right there, that should be it. That doesn't actually look too bad. I should be able to fit my uh, line set covers pretty well, actually. Alright, cool. So as you can see here with my sip wall, 
I have this uh, inside skin of OSB and I got the same thing on the outside, an outer OSB skin with solid foam in between. And so this piece of OSB here is connected to the foam behind it. So you got this inner skin of uh, OSB and then it's just foam all the way through there. As you can see, I got the, uh, the first piece on the line cover set installed out here. I didn't show that just because uh, it was starting to rain. I didn't want to have my phone out here in the rain. But yeah, I got that up. Now I'm going to go ahead and start installing some of the vertical pieces here. And then I think I'll be ready to shove the line set outside the hole. I don't really need, I guess, the sleeve that they send with it because I don't have just loose insulation in my wall. I've got solid foam insulation, basically barrier all the way around. And once I get the line set through here and everything is good and ready to, and done, I'm gonna go ahead and fill all of these back in with spray foam. They come with like a putty, a clay. I'll probably put that in. I don't know if it'll be the inside or outside, but then I'll spray foam the rest and fill in this whole gap. A lesson I learned from uh, Kyle at RR Buildings. If it looks level or plumb, then it is level or plumb. So the only actual place these uh, line set covers get screwed in is at these couplers. These are just free floating in here. It's just once you get, uh, now this isn't the cover, this is the next one, but you'll have a cover that gets screwed onto there. And that, once this cover's on, you screw that cover on, you screw that cover on, and all these, and these hold these vertical pieces in place. All right, don't listen to what I just said. That's what happens when you don't read instructions. So that is in fact actually what I did for all of these. And I think it'll be fine, but it's not what the instructions say. And I didn't read them until after the fact. So while these pieces don't actually have any pre-drilled, pre-made holes on any ends to screw in like the coupling pieces do, the instructions tell you to drill holes in the end of these. Essentially through the piece as well as the coupler to anchor this with a screw actually into the wall. I didn't do that on any of these, but that's what the instructions say to do. I just didn't read them in time. So read the instructions before actually installing, unlike I did. I also don't think I mentioned where I got these line set covers from. I actually got mine from Pioneer, which is another brand of mini split heat pumps. They have this size as well as a size larger for the bigger line sets for, you know, bigger units. I can leave a link to those in the description. All right, I've got the covers on outside. I think I am ready for the actual line set. I just straightened that out. It's a 16 foot line set. I'm gonna start uh, shoving it through. Okay, that was definitely a two-person job, uh, at least in this case. Unfortunately, my wife isn't home, so I had to get the help of my daughter. Um, but this, so I would definitely recommend using the normal three and a half uh, sleeve. One, it's bigger, so you just have more room. And also it's smooth, so it should slide more easily through, uh, through the hole. In this case, I was trying to just make this hole as small as I could, or at least come out away from this wall as little as possible, because I'm gonna have to cover this with something, and I'm, I'm assuming just like a faux beam is what I'm ultimately gonna go with. I think that'll look the nicest, plus I've got like beams and stuff, so it'll kind of, it'll go. But that was the reason I went this route in this case. Uh, going forward, I think I'm definitely gonna use the three and a half inches, but uh, I think I can go ahead, connect this stuff up, get the condensate, and run the wiring through now. All right, I haven't made my line set connections yet, but I got my uh, wiring through my hole as well as my condensate drain. And you can notice right here on this, uh, see the drain, this extension goes over top so you get like the proper shingling when draining this way. These nubs on here hold this pretty snugly, but I'm gonna go ahead and tape this just with some like good duct tape, just to be safe. Uh, but you should be good as long as you got proper slope and that's connected in all the way, you should be good, it shouldn't go anywhere. Okay guys, as you can see, the 
this line is done. I just have it uh, coming down out the bottom here and it's just, uh, well, this the wires, I, I just have this kind of going back up here because I don't want it sitting on the ground. Uh, it's just run long and it comes down to here. I actually had to pull this sleeve down so the, the line set actually ends here. I had to pull a bunch of this sleeve down. I just got it basically, it's just clamped in this last coupler here um, because it was really hard to fit it in this line set cover. I got the line set cover size that it said for this size of uh, unit. I got the 12,000 BTU unit here and it says this is the right size for it, which it is fine when it's just the line sets themselves and their foam uh, insulation. But with this uh, extra, I don't know, vinyl cover that Mr. Cool sends these with, it just, it adds size and it's kind of hard to shove it into there all to fit it in there. So if you wanted to shove it in uh, that in there as well, you'd probably need the, the next bigger size of line set. This is what I had to do for this one. So I got some extra here down at the ground. That'll just get cut off, whatever, and uh, I won't worry about it. So like I said, that one's basically done. Our dog, unfortunately, is no longer with us. So this cage will be, uh, that's his last year's weeds. <laughs> this cage will be going away. Um, and the unit will be over here. I have a wall mount bracket that it's gonna be going in right over here. And I'm gonna be having three units uh, coming right here. One's gonna be coming out of my basement, and another one's gonna be coming down this wall right alongside the gutter here. The one for the basement, I'm gonna be using this Arex Titan outlet. Let me show you what this guy is. So this I thought was a much nicer way of bringing it out of the wall from my basement. You can get gray and white that I've seen and there's a different even uh, a different style you can get right here. I think this style is meant more for um, if you're installing it before siding because then siding I believe can go over go over the outside edges of that stuff. This is what I'm going to be using down here and I can go down there and show you. So this is going to be going in somewhere right around here. This is where I'm going to be bringing it out of my uh, the joy space with it from in my basement. I have a uh, a board, a PVC piece of trim, a block that I basically I have painted and uh, drying right now that I'm going to be putting installing first, drilling a hole through that and then through my through my rim board into the the joist cavity in the basement. And this will go right over top. This will get drilled right into that uh, PVC trim board. Line sets will come out here and then there's actually a uh, pipe clamp that will squeeze down on that and hold that tight and then I'll foam inside and uh, seal this whole thing up so it's good and uh, airtight. So if you're interested in the uh, A-Rex Titan outlet, I'll leave a link to this in the description. on the outside if you notice my walls are so thick and then I got my rain screen uh, behind my siding that air gap there this uh, inner sleeve doesn't even actually come all the way out past here so this isn't cut this is just uh, that's the full length it doesn't even come all the way down there so I'm going to be taking my stuff and bending them this way sloping it down that way towards the uh, trim there and hopefully just riding the trim down and ultimately down that corner to get down to my unit over there. So what I'm using here is a color matched caulk. This is color matched to this, to my blue siding here. And I'm getting right around the rim of this to just seal this whole edge all the way around here. Prevent any water from getting in. And I drilled a couple holes here. I'm gonna put it on top and bottom. And I also kind of got a little bit of extra caulk around those to screw this in nice and flush because I went on a little bit more of an angle, I think, than I should have on my sleeve coming out. And since it's not even all the way in, or it's not all the way sticking out, this isn't held in well at all on its own. It's not held in by the sleeve here. So uh, I'm gonna be screwing it into place to hold it there. And hopefully this caulk should seal everything and prevent water from getting anywhere behind there. So we are now to the point of this project that I have most dreaded and the primary reason why I drug my feet at this project to begin with. I have to now connect my line set here, take it along sideways over to here, down there, and then straight down. 
So I still have uh, either one or maybe two coupler pieces to place on this trim here. And I got one to place here. So this stuff I've painted the same blue where and it's gonna connect up to there. And I got one coupler piece to put in here. I'm just running this line set sideways and then diagonal. So I can only access this stuff from down there. I can access it partially from up here because this is a much steeper slope than here. I got two different slopes in the front versus the back. So I'm just, I'm worried kind of with the line set with the, with the weight of just taking it here, how easy it's going to be to actually do this. I don't know. So I'm hoping it's not quite as bad as I've been anticipating, but I'm about to find out. My block that I made and painted for uh, going about right here for my line set for my basement unit to come out of my wall at. So I worked pretty hard when I was building the house to ensure I got this as airtight and sealed up as possible. And that's kind of the reason why I put this project off and <laughs> annoyed my wife a little bit because we had these units for a while. Part of it was this winter. Part of it was because I was just nervous about going forward with drilling holes in my house in my sit panels and worried that i wouldn't necessarily be able to seal them back up as well so i'm gonna try my best but it's just this is this is nerve-wracking for me to be drilling these holes in my house so that's so easy enough i just use my box uh to make or you know my block itself to make an outline and then I just added 3 16 and then made lines all the way around that way because 3 16 is the recommended gapping for uh, this siding, which is LP smart side siding because of expansion and contraction. They just fill those gaps with uh, color match caulk. Well, the boring of the hole is done. Now I need to hurry up and get this thing back on here. I'm going to have some uh, elastomeric caulk to seal around this hole, as well as I think just around the top and sides of the box to, um, I guess just for you know water intrusion to help, even though I got the, the house wrap back here. Um, but the caulk I think should still help leaving the bottom open just in case and he does get back there it's still able to get out behind it but i want to hurry up and try to get the the line sets through here and get this closed up because i don't want to leave just a huge hole open hole in the side of my house pulling this through by yourself is a pain in the butt if you got to pull through joists and anything like that, unless you're just coming straight out of the house, this is a two person job. Now I'm gonna caulk around all these, these seams here. And this has its own little rubbery gasket material all the way around. And it's on there nice and secure. So this should hopefully keep water out. These line sets come with clay to plug up the holes. I think what I'm gonna do is use some of that clay in here. This is gonna come down some, so I'm gonna use some of that clay in here, get it right around where this pipe clamp is gonna be and just squeeze that. And that'll hopefully just seal real nice all the way around the line set and the wire. And then obviously inside I'm gonna spray foam.
So something I unfortunately didn't get any footage of was the hanging of this bracket as well as the mounting of the unit itself. So hanging the bracket just consists of, I believe we had three 3 8 inch concrete anchors into the wall to hold this bar. Then these two arms just slide onto that bar and hang and we also fastened those with a couple 5 16 inch concrete anchors. Then you just have to lift the unit up onto these arms, and even this 36,000 BTU unit wasn't too heavy for me and my dad. So we got it up there, no prop. Then you just have to fasten the feet to the arms with bolts in all four corners. They also come with little rubber feet that you can put in between there to help minimize uh, some vibration. Then I just had to hook up the line sets, which can be a little bit of a pain, just depending on how much space you have. And you just gotta be really careful and make sure you don't kink any of the lines. So this four zone unit obviously has four zones labeled as A, B, C, and D. And the instructions tell you to put the air handler with the highest BTU rating on the lowest zone, which would be A. And then the next lowest on B, and next on C, and so forth. So my biggest unit was my 18,000 BTU unit, so that needed to go on A. So once you have all your line sets and units hooked up and you've checked for leaks, you can go ahead and pop the caps off of the different zone valves and start to carefully open them with this supplied Allen wrench. Then these valves up at the top are called your king valves, and once you have all the valves open up down below that you're using, you open up these ones the same way. I unfortunately really didn't cover this part of the process very well, and I apologize for that including these electrical hookups. I'll make sure to cover this stuff better when I install my other unit. This is just your basic uh, like HVAC standard disconnect. This is actually kind of an old one. You can kind of tell it looks a little ratty. This is an old one my dad had. And this one's actually a, a fused one, whereas a lot of the newer ones don't actually have fuses in them. It's just a disconnect. This is an older one, but it's working fine. So once everything is hooked up, including the power and all the valves are open, all I had to do was switch on the breaker and then the instructions tell you to turn on the indoor air handler units to the highest temperature and then the coldest temperature and run them for five minutes each to make sure that there are no leaks when running in these configurations. So I did each indoor unit individually and while that test was running, that's when I went around to spray the different connections and make sure there were no leaks. And once I was good on the leaks, I could start installing the sound deadening tape around all of those connections. Alright folks, well I think that should just about wrap it up. Uh, well hold on, let me check. Yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful for you. If you're at all leaning towards this or curious about the Mr. Cool, definitely check them out. I haven't had it very long, like I said at the beginning. I will be doing an update in the future, but so far they've been working great. It is simple, it is DIY, but definitely take your time. If you're new to this kind of thing, take your time, make sure you're reading the instructions and doing everything properly you will be glad you did. But I'm super happy with my Mr. Cool DIY setup. I think you probably would be too, so check them out. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are getting a lot out of this stuff. Uh, like, subscribe, and uh, happy 4th of July, guys. I'll see you later. God bless.